Welcome Professor Jeff Peters. Jeff Peters is a professor of system strategy at the Open University of UK. He is here in the AAOU conference and he just now made a very interesting presentation about partnership. The title of his topic was how to ensure partnerships go wrong. One particular point in partnership is that any partnership should have a win-win situation for all the stakeholders. In your experience, in addition to the Open University in UK, have you come across institutions doing a kind of a stakeholders analysis that you being my partner, what is the advantage I give for you? Do you think that kind of an analysis is taking place in the, at the institutional level? I think sometimes it does. And I think that the really successful partnerships are the win-win-win ones where you can see the benefits for both partners and you can see that there's a gain for, if you like, the consumer, for the student, that there is something that you can do together that you couldn't either of you do on your own. In your presentation, you gave seven points that yes. if any institution adopt the seven points that partnership will go wrong. Uh, could you explain those points? Yes, I, I think I can pretty well guarantee that partnerships will go wrong. Uh, these aren't the only seven but they're seven that, that I think from the research and from my experience do seem uh, to be pretty foolproof in terms of making sure that a partnership doesn't work. Um, the first one is uh, about keeping it woolly about just having a vague idea that these are two institutions that really ought to be able to do something together. Okay. And uh, in universities, you know, vice chancellors and presidents meet and say, we should be doing more together. And then they set some people together uh, from their both sides to try and work something out, or one organization and a university or, or a school or whatever. And uh, that's pretty, sh pretty certain not to work, because essentially it's too vague and nothing uh, nobody really knows what was in their mind and so on. Um, the second one which is related to that, which is essentially have one big idea, but don't bother to test it out. So you, could, you, can, you can think through, well actually we could work together and we could do this exciting thing. Okay. And you set off to do that, but you don't actually test whether it makes any sense or whether anybody wants it or... or or whatever. If you take the Paulo Freire's uh, learner-centric approach, the students should also be a partner. Mm -hmm. But right now we see students as a consumer. Do you think that the open universities, do they have a scope to take student as a partner, help in developing learner-centric approaches and take the education to a different plane? I think that's a very challenging question. I, I think that uh, in some ways that's a bigger challenge for open universities than it is for others. And their history is such that they have uh, in, in the past with correspondence calls, courses and then the second generation of open and distance learning which was long print runs and so on. They developed a model which although it may have been tested on students, worked on the basis that the teachers developed the model and then the student benefited from it. Now, of course, the technologies are changing all that around. The student, uh, my view is that the open universities have to move and will move to a position where they are per creating personal universities for students. And so that the, it is very individualized. Mm -hmm. um, be, and the student is much more active in terms of deciding what they want from it and the institution is responding uh, to that by opening up the pathways and helping them through that. But it's, but it's a challenging model for open universities as it is for other institutions but it is a challenging model and we, and we have got to put our feet in the water and, and test and some of us are doing some of that already trying out models like that, seeing how well they uh, play with students and, and how they change the way in which we operate as an institution. You also talked about something where the first time I heard about it is the systems failure method. Do you think that could be a good tool to look in terms of one, the partnership issues, 
and two within the university systems particularly the open university systems the quality and other issues of which are being challenged do you think that could be a good tool to address those uh, issues Yes, let me say a little bit about it. The, the, over the last 30 years with some colleagues, we've been looking at large-scale failures, whether they are accidents or whether they are organizational failures and so on. And we've been trying to draw out some general lessons from those and, and put those in what I call systems terms, um, which is to trying to understand, if you like, the generic system, systemic nature gotcha. of this. And, um, I think, well, firstly, we have done some work on using that with partnerships. Okay. And we have certainly found that some of the things that go wrong in general with a large accident or whatever, or a large organizational failure, the, a version of those goes wrong with, with partnerships. partnerships. And those are things about, for example, not having good feedback me mechanisms in place, not having sufficient resources, mm -hmm. and so on. Now, you asked the question about quality. And uh, my own view having just been involved in, in, in quality assurance audit in the Open University in the UK, is that actually there is a lot uh, that we can give. I'm, I'm not a great fan of the quality assurance mechanisms okay. around the world, not least because they have actually just grown and grown. They become ever more elaborate. People add and add to them. Okay. And I think there is a need uh, just to go back to some basic principles, saying what is the purpose of this? Okay. What is it we are testing for, if you like, what would be a failure in okay. quality assurance? Okay. And how could we make sure that is not likely to happen? So I do think there's some interesting work to be done there. Do you think the partnership mode could help to address those challenges? Because I think the, uh, uh, the, uh, the basic fundamentals of ODL is being challenged by these institutions. I know in certain countries there are court cases where this government is being challenged saying that if there is a graduate from an open and distance learning institution that graduate should not get an employment, the first priority should go to person who went through a conventional university. I know the court cases are going on. Mm. Well, I think I'd say two things about that. In some ways it seems a bit odd that it would be happening now rather than 30 years ago. Um, and it, I, I can't help but feel that those people are just fighting against the tide. They, they will be, that, that can't last. Okay. Uh, open distance learning, e-learning is happening all over the place and it's bound to be successful uh, because the quality of the students will demonstrate how successful it is. Uh, in terms of partnership, I d I've got a bit of experience which might be helpful. And that is that uh, one of the things that, that, that my own faculty found was that when we went in, when we opened up new programs with industry, uh, which were high level postgraduate programs, we made new friends. We were working with uh, technical directors of companies and senior people in companies, and they then learned to respect okay. what we were doing. And that changed the climate for the lower level courses and students mm -hmm. um, with their with their seniors so I think there may be a way in which picking some partners who are influential and doing some good things for them you know whether it is the civil service or whether it is political parties or whether it is uh, you know the other people who are the movers and shakers in in society, society could well be a way in which one could change the climate, yes. Do you think there's a need for an ethics of partnership or a code of partnership? For instance, AAOU, could it uh, develop a code for partnership among its partners? You need to be careful about how you, what you ask of a partnership. But if you set up a partnership for one reason, and then you ask something else of it which is difficult, you may un make the whole thing unstable. Let's say that, just for an example, AAOU set up a, 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 a template for partnerships, and then some of the members of AAOU did not hold to that. Okay. They might be critical of AAOU as a result of that, and a when AAOU was, that was not the main purpose of AAOU. So I think, um, it's, it relates also to your question about quality assurance. Should organizations like AAOU or the European equivalent actually get involved in quality assurance? And they can help, but if they become 
the police. They have a different relationship than if they are, you know, your friend and uh, a, a, a member of the family. And yeah. so there are, there are risks as well as advantages. The reason why I asked this question was because a partnership, one, it has a legal angle. Mm. The other one is more of an ethical angle. Mm. Right. In a business model, you know, your partnership fulfills a legal angle dimension. But there are many universities which come together, which may not have a business model, but then mm. they'll say, okay, we'll uh, like to share uh, your strength and we'll be able to give our strength to you. So without any uh, business perspective, the institutions could come together. Mm. But then you require certain uh, standards so that the, both the parties could meet. Mm. So. That's the reason why I asked, do you think mm. there is a need mm. for such a code? Certainly an organization like AAOU could help formulate, if you like, a, a, a draft of, of, of the terms that universities or, or members of this association might use themselves. Uh, in the UK, we talk about being, uh, uh, the Open University being open to people, open to places, open to methods and open to ideas. And I've often wondered about adding open to partnership and then being, spelling out what that meant about you know, our dealings with partners, how we would deal with them and what we expected of them and so on. So I, I think it does touch on the ethical dimension, as you say. So what will be your message based on your experiences and your, uh, uh, your uh, long uh, interaction in the partnership? What would be your uh, message for the open universities in Asia? Well, I, th I, I, I have a very good colleague who's done a lot of research on partnerships uh, called uh, Siv Vangan. And she says that, you know, the first rule is, you know, if in doubt, don't do it, basically. Okay. Um, partnerships are not easy. Uh, they are high resource uh, and they require a lot of commitment and, and energy and effort. So, uh, by all means engage in partnerships when you're sure that there are good things to be done together um, and that you are both committed or the many partners are committed to it but don't don't drift into it in the same way you know don't drift into a marriage it will end in tears yes. and it is like that you know it could make things worse if don't you, force a partnership don't force a partnership exactly and don't allow an outside body to force a partnership. Don't let someone dangling money in front okay. of you force a partnership because okay. that won't be sustainable either. Thanks a lot, Jeff, for okay. all these thought-provoking ideas. It was a pleasure talking to you. You're very welcome. <laughs>